Starting your coffee with chopsticks using the vortex method, the only true way to optimize the taste of your coffee. At the molecular level, good morning. Welcome to the Daybreak Show. I am the Sultan. We'll get started, but first, coffee in a Rise and Shine coffee mug. Nice. Cold day, hot coffee. What a perfect combo. You might already have what's best. Think about this. You might already have what's best for you. If you pray for anything, pray that God opens your eyes to what you already have in front of you. What you need might already be there. You just don't see it yet. Maybe that's another way to view prayer rather than like writing a wish list for Santa Claus. Just a thought. That's something I realized many years ago, that everything I need is already in front of me. Everything that I need. Well, I do believe Scripture does say this. Peter talks about it, that we have all we need pertaining to life and godliness. So if that is true, and we don't realize it, why don't we just pray that God help us realize it? God, open your eyes. You don't hear a lot of people talking about that, do you? My three best friends are happenstance, providence, and serendipity. And so are yours. Look up those three words, and you will see that they are your three best friends. In the cool of the evening, when everything is getting kind of groovy, I call you up and ask you if you'd like to go with me and see a movie. First you say, no, you got some plans for the night. Then you stop and say, all right, love is kind of crazy with a spooky little girl like you. Boy, does that hit the nail on the head. The Atlanta Rhythm Section, 1979, I believe that was. Here's an interesting meme that I made up probably at least 10 or 12 years ago. If you know what this means, let me know. One of my favorite phrases is from Sandy Lerner. The reporter says, Do you think you're eccentric? She says, Yes, now that I'm rich. Before I was rich, I was just weird. She's the owner of, uh, or the former owner of Ayrshire Farm. If you just look up Ayrshire Farm, you will have an absolute treat just reading about it. A-Y-R-S-H-I-R-E. Ayrshire Farm. Might be the best thing you look at today. Well, gentlemen, 2015 was probably my favorite, most easily managed beard length. This was my protocol in 2015. A weekly fresh beard shaping. Tightened up with clippers, freehand keeping the sides narrow, not bushy, not Captain Fluffy Beard. Uh, round the bottom slightly. Uh, soft as silk, very soft. Washing once a week on Sundays, my Sunday wash with Grandpa's Pine Tar Soap, which doesn't strip all the natural oils off your skin and hair. A thumbnail of coconut oil applied and not rinsed while in the shower. Take Just take your little jar of coconut oil and just like, just take a little bit out and just rub it and massage it into the skin. Remember, hair grows out of skin. So what is good for your skin will be good for your hair. Never forget that. Air dry, get dressed. And then a few drops of beard oil and brushed with a boar bristle brush. Finally, a pinch of beard balm. A pinch. A pinch. The tiniest bit. To control any wild hair. And then maybe if you want to kind of bring the stash out and kind of make it a little distinct, you can do that. That sounds like a lot of work, doesn't it? But it's not nearly as much work as shaving. Four that want to own me, two that want to stone me, one says, she's a friend of mine. 
Jackson Brown, who wrote the song Take It Easy in 1971, I believe. And he talked to his friend Glenn Fry and said, I'm stuck in this song. Glenn had it for a short period of time. And then you know it from the Eagles, who made it famous and brought it to possibly number two. I don't know if it was a number one song. Maybe it was a number two song in 1972, the song Take It Easy. But it was kind of interesting. In an interview, Jackson Brown said, so I'm in Arizona and there's girls everywhere driving trucks. And Glenn Fry puts in that one line, there's a girl, my lord, in a flatbed Ford slowing down to take a look at me. That put just kind of like the salt. It just brought the flavor out of that song. But Take It Easy would not be here if it was not for Jackson Brown. And he is given very little credit for that. Most people think it's an Eagles tune solely. It was written by Jackson Brown, fine-tuned by Glenn Fry, and then made a hit by the Eagles. Gentlemen, you will get along better with women. Better and better. Not because women will change, but because you will change. It's funny, I said that. I posted that on Gab. And Gab's a funny place sometimes. There can be some real jerk-offs there. I mean, real hardcore idiots. With fake names and fake pictures and hiding behind the anonymity and they're, they are nothing but repost queens except when they want to disagree with you. Then they think they have an original thought. And this one asshole says, I'll never change for some dumbass bitch. <laughs> and I'm like, you idiot, you just lost the whole, the whole meaning of that message. You get along better with women because you change. That you changing thing means you literally have less to do with women. You get along better with them the less you have to do with them. Not because you're changing and bowing down to them. You literally are... Your life is not... Listen. I am the original MGTOW. Someone just came along and put a, a stupid title on it and gave all us guys a bad name. I said years ago, I haven't had a fight with a woman in years, not because women changed, but because I changed. You want, con you want a life with less contention? Then stop getting yourself enmeshed with people who bring contention. And for most men, that's with women. Most of the trouble you've had in life is because of women. Number one. Number two, because you acted like a woman. Some of you will get that. And again, some of you, it'll just be like whoosh right over your head. During an online checkout process of a certain product, this was one of the windows. During the checkout process, what are your thoughts about this? question is, what describes your gender? Male, here's the choices, male, female, transgender male, transgender female, or gender queer, neither exclusively male nor female, and then other. What the actual is that all about? A company that wants me to take them fucking seriously puts this shit in their checkout process? You gotta be fucking kidding me. I wonder if, if enough people actually wrote them and said, what the fuck, dudes? Will they change that shit? <sighs> hey, what was the uh, first conspiracy theory that you heard of it that made you think the government maybe isn't telling you the truth about everything? My, my theories go back uh, over 80 years in history. But I didn't start diving into those theories until 45 years later. Probably, oh, I'm guessing, probably in the 70s when I started doubting stuff. Doubting what I was taught in school. And since then, it's been everything from 9-11, Building 7, 
irrefutable. This is all fucking irrefutable shit. Uh, the moon landing, uh, the flattish earth, earth, the existence of a firmament. I didn't say, I didn't mention anything about a firmament, firmament, but I know someone who did. Don't argue with me, argue with him. The real reason for the Titanic sinking, various real estate tales in the Middle East, fluoride in your water, fluoride in your toothpaste, the 432 or 440 hertz theory, the 150 mile per gallon carburetor, the New World Order, the Illuminati, chemtrails, NASA, MK Ultra, the depopulation agenda through vaccines, Michelle Obama, TV flicker rates, gravity, Paul McCartney, Tesla Energy, the mainstream media, Hollywood pedos, the Georgia Guidestones, dinosaurs, etc., etc., etc. What was the first conspiracy theory that made you think a little bit different about what you've been taught? So my dad is on this bluegrass cruise. It's a great story. He's on a, on a cruise. My mother and father used to go on cruises a lot. He was on a bluegrass cruise. He plays the mandolin. In between sets, he goes out on the deck to have a smoke. Another guy is out there having a smoke, a cigar, and they start talking. The other guy was there for the classic rock cruise. So on that cruise ship, there was a bluegrass themed cruise vacation and another section of the cruise ship was a classic rock themed section of the ship. And these two guys end up out on the deck leaning over the railing looking at the ocean together. Just chit-chatting. My dad asks this guy, so what do you do? The guy says, I'm lead singer for a band named Foreigner. My dad said, re, didn't blink an eye. He says, my kids probably know your band. Shortly after they shook hands, the guy went in his direction, my dad went in his direction. Isn't that a great story? It's always easy to tell what sincere is. Sincere is when the eyes smile along with the face. A smile that is not accompanied by smiling eyes is a fake, insincere smile. Once you learn to spot that, boy, it'll make your life easier, a lot easier. For many people, this is the first holiday season, Thanksgiving, Christmas and such, without a mom, a dad, a spouse, a family member, who may have passed in the past year. And I know you'll be looking at that empty place at the dinner table every now and then, and you hear their voice in your head, their jokes, their perspective on life. And I know it feels strange not having them there. But I'm sure of this. They want you to carry on. They want you to enjoy your day and smile. So I am with you. I wish I had a wine glass here just to demonstrate this. This is a great thing to do. I'm with you. As you raise a glass at that dinner, whatever that family holiday dinner is, I'm with you. When you raise your glass and say, this is for mom, this is to dad, to my wife, to my husband, as you give thanks for them, for the time that you had them in your life, and not so much grieve the loss, which you will always do, but to be more thankful for the time that you did have with them. And that could be a breakthrough for you. That could be an actual breakthrough as far as alleviating some of the grief that you might have about losing people. You will always have that sting there. It's always going to be there. But this brightens things up just a little bit. Think about that. I don't care if you have to do it every morning with your coffee. 
Think about this, all right? Even if you raise your coffee cup and say, Dad, this is for you. Honey, this is for you. I'm going to have a great day today. Thank you. I love you. Sound crazy? I don't think so. There is a great cloud of witnesses, a great cloud of people cheering you on as you move towards the finish line in your life. And that person that you're grieving is one of those people cheering you on. And with that, finish your coffee, and I'll see you on the next Daybreak Show, your home of sanity, clarity, and reason.